Got him. Got him. It's a big one. It's a big one. Got him. Got him. Ooh, Bite. Fish. We got one. We got one. We got one. Oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, I was about to say, how did we not get rewarded with a bite? That was such an epic cast. Going yes. on, y'all. Welcome back to the channel. A little bit under the weather today, but that is not going to stop us from getting out because the polls have been going nuts on Instagram. You guys want to see some big swim baits getting thrown. So today, we are going to be kayak fishing. Haven't broken out the kayak in a little while. Big swim baits. We're taking out the pedal drive. This is the Old Town PDL 106, 10 and a half foot pedal drive yak by old town and uh yeah it's gonna be a good old time we're also linking up with somebody you haven't seen in quite some time on the channel torrance he's been pretty busy he's been all over the place pond boys if you aren't following him go check him out but right now number one goal is loading up the tundra we're gonna strap this kayak down i got a uh, big swim bait rod right here a couple different rods we might take as well along with it just to chunk some swim baits today toss around some things like possibly the soft plastic citizens some hard plastic glide baits we've got we've also got some multi-jointed and swim baits in here, uh, bluegill baits, shad style baits, creeping some down low in some deeper water. We're also going to be fishing some shallow stuff with some of these. Uh, we're going to go through some treble hook baits. We're going to talk about single hook baits and just have a good day out on the kayaks. It has been a while. So let's go ahead and load everything up. Definitely going to be taking him along. Probably take this guy as well. Uh, maybe the full size. tackle box slash rod holder then we are going to be in need of a kayak seat there we go we'll leave the net at home forget it. one thing we can't forget is the actual pedal drive system itself it's so easy to forget things when you go out kayak fishing and then we're gonna need a, a paddle just in case hit some shallow zones and also to help when we launch. All right, y'all couldn't forget the shades. We are loaded up and strapped down, but there's one more tackle box I could not forget to grab it. I'm gonna tell you what's in it and why we wanted to grab it as soon as we hit the water. So, catch you there. Well, currently driving and already realizing I forgot the paddle after I got the pedal drive system. So, yeah, go ahead and drop down in the comments what was the last thing y'all left on accident when you went out kayak fishing. It's, there's always, a, you gotta have a list, man. You gotta have a list. That's the thing. Look, paddle or no paddle, all I know is I'm ready to meet up with Torrance. It's gonna be a fun time and we gonna catch some fishies. All right, I definitely love the autopilots with the trolling motor and spot lock. So much more once you're on the water, but I gotta say, this thing is so light that it's nice loading and unloading the old 10 footer. All right, so Torrance has arrived, Pond Boys. What's up, big dog? I, it's been long, a while. Long time no see, man. You guys gotta subscribe to his channel, man. He he deserves a lot more views than he's getting right now, so share his stuff right now. I'm gonna go on there, comment on all of his stuff, dude. Blow it up, man. I appreciate I it. Haven't seen you in a long time, so it has really been a good while. to see you, dude. Same here, man. And right back at him. You guys got to go check out his channel. He's doing the same thing, working hard. He is out here with the Old Town today. You Check this thing out. So we're both rocking the Old Towns, but like I say, he's going to have the motor with the spot lock, which I love when you get out there. Right now, it's going to be nice and easy for me to just push mine in the water, no problem. He's got a few things extra to load up, but once we get out there, he's going to be spot locked, and I'm going to be pedaling my... Uh, rear end off trying to stay in the same let's spot race. so <laughs> let's race yeah we'll this have one, to at least this race. one's faster seriously it is like and all honestly i love this one like weston actually let me use it right before a storm and the fact that i can just keep switching and move left and right and back up and move up and back up with your feet 
it is fun, but I do love standing up. So maybe one day we'll do a. We need to do a versus, comparison. Yeah, comparison. y'all need to see. What would you want to see us test, like between the two of them? That's Let what we know. need to know. That's what we need to know. He didn't forget his paddle, so he's in good shape. Oh, but <laughs> I didn't bring a paddle, but I'm just gonna push out and I'll be alright. You know, you know how it goes. So, the 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 tackle box I was gonna bring though, showcasing one more bait I wanted to talk about is right here in my hands y'all and i'm going to show you exactly what i wanted to break free for today's video so check this out it's still hot down here in texas right sun's high these fish could be out deep and a lot of these swim baits you're kind of creeping slow but it takes a while for them to sink well i have the 316 mission fish right here check this guy out got a few different colors uh was inspired to start throwing it again there was a time when we threw these like very often and we kind of stopped for a minute well guess what our buddy Jared down in Austin just caught a double digit on these the other day. So I was like, you know what? Maybe it's time to break out the mission fish again. <laughs> so this thing essentially fishes like a, a Texas rig, but it's a seven inch soft plastic swim bait the uh, the hook in there is actually it's a line through swim bait so the hook actually you can just take off completely off of this thing you feed the line through you tie it to your hook and you fish it just like a texas rig with the hook text posed so i'll be able to get down deep and i'll be able to just set the hook jam some hook sets on a similar jig or texas rig bite than like those typical swimming swim bait hits so if they are in fact down very low we have an opportunity to catch them with the mission fish if they're a little bit higher we're going to be throwing something like the citizens and those soft plastic baits and then if they're uh really high if we're in some shallow water i'm going to be throwing some glide baits and those hard plastic swim baits so anyways we're getting ready to launch this thing we'll tell you more as we start fishing and you brought the whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, bro. Torrance is loaded down. Right, yeah. <laughs> it's a dime, dude. We've, we've had some, some great success at this place, man. We've had a lot of good memories at this spot. And even how we found it was just crazy. We'll probably talk about that in a whole nother video. But, man, me and this guy, even your wife, dude, we've, we've gone out and had some crazy times. So yep. let's try to implement that today. I what don't do you have do? too What are you doing? To, like, what's on your uh, agenda? What are you up to? My agenda is to go out. So uh, when are you releasing this video? <laughs> That's a good question. Put them right on the spot, bro. Think, like, it could be like okay. later tonight. No, it'll probably okay. be a couple days. Okay, if it's a couple days, I can release it. But right here, uh, we have a thing called Quad Lock, and I'm going to play with this today. Um, I don't know if Weston would like it, but I was going to give him one as well. Uh, basically, what you do with this bad boy is you have a case, right? And uh, this bad boy is going to charge the entire day. All I have to do is put it on here. Uh oh. Like that. Don't lie. And it will stay right here the entire day. Uh, it's wirelessly charged but I will obviously have to plug something into here, but completely waterproof. Uh, the pad's gonna charge it, and then you just can move it around exactly how you want it. You, there's different pieces. There's even adhesive pieces to where uh, you don't have to put holes in your kayak, but I just wanted a more sturdier thing. So, you know, Dang. when I'm doing videos or when I'm doing lives, it'll be right here all day. Or when I wanna take my picture, I don't have to go in there and- uh, It's marketed like, as a phone mount, or you can put like almost anything? Like you can like um, mount almost anything? It's a phone mount. Uh, I would That's just say sick. it's a phone mount. And the case is really cool too, because you can get all these different attachments. Like you can put it on your bike as well. Really cool stuff, man, quad lock. We got it all dialed in. I think what you guys are ready for is some fishing. So we're gonna go ahead, get out here and start casting some lines. So well, here's what we're uh, starting with. I got the mission fish. I just tied my hook. So what you do is you feed the line through the nose of this bait. It's got a weighted nose. I think it's a, uh, oh man, don't even quote me. It's been so long since we got these ones. I, I want to say it's like a half ounce or something. So I'm going to put this hook back up in here, rig it just like a, uh, almost like a, I'm going to rig it almost like a punch bait, not have the hook go all the way through. And we are ready and set to hit the thick stuff. This is going to be fun. I'm throwing it on the Tranks 200. It's actually like the 201. Uh, just means they're left-handed. It's got the DRT varial handles. Y'all haven't seen those in a while. And the seven foot, 10 inch uh, heavy, what is this, swim bait and A-rig rod. So we about to fish this thing like there ain't no tomorrow. See if we can get us a big one. Probably should have faced it the other way. Oh, well. There we go, launched. And I think we're deep enough right now for the pedal drive system. So let's drop that down, locks in place. And uh, we're set. Oh, you know what? I didn't flip the rudder down for steering. That's going to be a problem. Oh, wait. It's been so long since I've used this kayak. There's a lever to flip the rudder down. I didn't even think about it. Ha! Nice, Weston. Casted at all these trees with the mission fish for quite a minute. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to tie on a moving bait now. How about a buka bullgill to get things started? Or should we just go for the full-on bull shad? 
Maybe we'll just throw the bullshit. It's been a while. Let me toss this thing out there. I forgot this is straight braid on here, but you know what? That'll be okay. Bullshad, this thing is well known in the fishing community. We've had this thing for a while. It's been just kind of collecting dust. You can tell because it's been in the tackle box a while and the tail's a little messed up, but I got to feel it after getting in the water. And a few casts, it'll be looking gravy. I'm going to loosen up my drag a little bit because if something hits these treble hooks, I would actually like for them to uh, not just bend the hooks out as soon as they bite it because this rod is uh, an extra fast tip. Mission fish. That was just swimming up slow though. Yep, there we go. All right, nice. So they might like the moving swim bait bite. So one thing that's so awesome about this uh, specific swim bait is that it works so good as a Texas rig, but at the same time, you can also just slow creep it and swim it because it does have that paddle tail. So in this case, I was slow creeping it. Do 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 do. And that's what got the bite. Now remember, it's lined through, so this hook kind of goes all over the place, and that's perfectly fine. You just kind of fix it right back up. You start by pulling it up to the to the nose, essentially. <laughs> Boom. I'm going to put that hook right back in there. I gave that fish a few bites. It didn't feel like a huge fish, so I didn't set the hook right away. Usually the bigger fish, all you feel is one little tick, and it's their lips closing on the line and you set the hook but that one was almost like a couple of tugs and uh, i just gave him a second to make sure he consumed the whole mission fish and then i set it up because he was a little closer to the kayak i cast it at that tree but now that i think they might be kind of hitting something that's more on the move again i'm going to cast at some target areas so i'm right on the edge of the lily pads i might pop it for a second and then what i'm going to do is after i'm done with that i'm going to lower the rod tip and i'm just going to slow creep it right on back to the boat that's how we got that catch let's go for some more Time for a sip of water. There goes the mission fish, one of our three. I think they're like 17 bucks a piece. We need to re-up on them anyways, but uh, that one was pretty torn up as well on the top and kind of need to be mended with some soft plastic swim bait glue. So now I think it's time to showcase some different baits. Here we go, I haven't thrown these a lot lately. A purple citizen. As far as the purple color goes, I've barely thrown it at all, but citizens I haven't thrown in a while. So let's break out the working class zero. Losing one of these would be really upsetting because they're hard to acquire. It's not the cost on these, it is actually the exclusivity. If y'all want to try and get any of these citizens, basically they sell out generally in like seconds. So you'd have to sign up for the email newsletter at workingclasszero.net in order to get a hold of these things. Or just to like see when the drops are. This is a six inch citizen and uh, we've got it rigged up with an owner beast hook which is actually uh, set up specifically for you'll see it's got a little indention on the bottom for the weight itself you can notice that and then i have the hook tip bent up just a little bit i've taken pliers and we've bent up that hook just a hair so we increase our hookup ratio because normally that hook is pretty much flush or parallel with the top surface skin of this bait and uh yeah i mean they've just got an insane kick these things work through grass so good i mean when you're talking about soft plastic swim baits that you can creep through the grass. This one just sheds the grass so easily. It's it's weird. It honestly is. And so uh, we've caught a lot of good fish on these citizens. Devin's previous PB at Lake Fork was caught on one of these citizens before she recently caught that. I think it was like an eight and some change on a Mondo worm. Um, so these things will catch bigs. And I'm just going to slow creep it until I feel that tick. These things, uh, a lot of people who get them, they assume you're supposed to swim them kind of quickly like some other swim baits. Nah, you're supposed to creep these down low on the bottom. So what will happen is if you swim these fast enough, they'll actually start to swim sideways. And people are like, well, I think mine's messed up. No, it's not. You're just working it too fast. You want to cast this thing out. You want to let it sink down to the bottom or at least get into the grass that you might be fishing if you're in a, a, a grassy lake, right? And uh, once you get to that point, go ahead and start cranking it in nice and slow. I mean like methodically slow. 
And if you feel a little weight, oftentimes it's creeping through grass, just kind of give it a quick half whip, shed that grass. It usually happens nice and easily, but if you still feel the weight, it's probably because a fish has picked it up and you need to go ahead and slam that hook set. So anytime I feel anything that could even resemble a bite, usually I give the reel a quick turn or two. And if I still feel that weight, then I go for the hook set. And that's kind of my pattern there. That's a stump. Let's try not to lose this one. There we go. Got it. Oh, a bass was on it. Wow, a bass just followed it up to the kayak. Whoo! Got him. Got him. There we go. Good one. All right, there we go. Nice one on the citizen. Sick, probably three and a half to four pounds. Woo! All right, that's what we're looking for. He's trying to back off there. Look at, he's choked it too. Oh my gosh. Come here, bud. Oh, solid fish. Shoot, look at that right there. What a bite. Golly, choked, choked it. I mean, absolutely demolish the citizen. Look at that right there. That's intense. All right, y'all. Let's get him back in the water and go for some more. That was so awesome. Thank you, buddy. Big old swim bait bite. I got a feeling there might be some more on this line here. Man, was I feeling good about that cast in between all those twigs. Holy smokes. Check the line. Check the line. We're feeling, we're feeling pretty good. All right. I would say it's time to get right back in there. Before we catch the next big one, let's get into a word from today's sponsor, Carl's Bait and Tackle. All right, y'all, Carl's Bait and Tackle is cooking everybody up. Whether you are an existing Carl's Club member or you want to start a trial, right now is the time, October 12th through the 18th is Carl's Club member week. We've been shopping with Carl's Bait and Tackle for the last couple of years, but not only that, if you want to get started throwing swim baits, it is the perfect place to grab something like the Gantrell Junior Bluegill Swim Bait, the Buka Bull Shad. They also have the Baby Bull Shad and Baby Bull Gill if you just want to dip your toes in the water or you can even go all in and grab some things like the Google Squad Contenders. Those are some of our favorite multi-jointed swim baits to get you started. But this week specifically, members are going to receive a $10 future credit on orders of $50 or more, dollars, a free gift with each purchase as well as exclusive access to the new launch of the Yee Yee Filthy Frog. That is probably what I'm most excited about. Top water season is right here and it's going to be right up there with the swim baits as far as I'm concerned on what I'm going to be throwing. Be sure to check back throughout the week as there's going to be new offers rolling out through the 12th and the 18th and you don't want to miss a thing also our discount code actually applies and stacks with everything going on this Carl's Club member week so you can save an additional ten dollars off of your first purchase ever of 25 or more on Carl's Bane Tackle simply by using code Weston 10 so get on over there to shopcarls.com take advantage of the offer and let's now catch some more big swim bait fish man let's go Got him. It's a big one. It's a big one. Oh no, he came off. Oh my gosh. That was a big one. Oh my. That was so heavy. Wow. He bit it as soon as it hit the water, y'all. Oh my gosh. Welcome back to the video. Oh, I thought I had another bite. Oh my gosh. That fish felt so heavy. Come back. Oh, wait. Oh, fudge. Fudge. What is going on? Yeah, this spot is just stacked with them right now, y'all. We keep getting bites. This is insane. The citizen bite is on today. Oh my gosh, and they're choking it. What a crazy fun bite. Holy smokes. 
few catches in. We're going to stay out here for a little bit longer, but Torrance, crappie guy today, yeah. he's got to go, so uh, we're going to say peace out to him. How many did you catch, though? Uh, probably four or five massive ones, and then like 10 other really small ones, but it was a crazy time, man. I did not expect that to happen at all, and like I said, I didn't have a much uh, that much time out here. Weston's getting on some nice ones, so like and subscribe to his channel, man. Peace out. Thanks for having me, and uh, Yee -yee. He's off! Oh, day! Right like the wind, bullseye! <laughs> Alright, let's try and get some more on the big baits, y'all. We're heading off into the shallow since that seems to be where they're at, so I'll catch you there. We are in the grass. Oh, that's a bite. Fish. Fish. What do we got? Yo, that's a big one. There we go. Come on up here, son. Nice. Another solid one on the citizen. Got him. Coming right through this grass patch I saw on the surface. How sick is that? Golly. The bite on the citizen is hot, y'all. But I want to show y'all some different baits. As much as I want to just keep throwing this and catching them, we ain't got time for that. Here's a little tip of the day on your on your swim baits. So you'll see whether it is the top of this right here that gets all messed up or the noses. Like here's a 316. Look at that nose. It's all torn up if you can see that, hopefully. And then now after that most recent fish, you can see the nose on this bait is starting to get torn up. And uh, this is a screw lock hook. So after a few catches, you might actually just rip that hook all the way out. And you ain't going to be catching no more fish on that bait. Well, check it out. Working Class Zero has their own product. But this is 316's soft bait glue. So grab a little bit of that. And all you got to do is just get you a little dab, right? And you just run it right over the nose of that bait. And uh, I'm not going to continue fishing it as I do it now. I'm going to do it here when I get home. But uh, run it over the nose of that bait. Let it sit for just a minute. I even like to dip it in the water just to cool it down, help it cure, and it will be solid and ready to fish again. Same thing with the top of the bait. Sometimes the hook starts to move around after you catch quite a few because this opening gets enlarged and you can just take that hook out. You can go ahead and seal it shut and then you can re-penetrate that hook through and it's going to stay right where you need it. So that soft plastic swim bait glue is a must if you're fishing these big swim baits and then also one thing that's key just so that your tails are staying in shape and they have the best action or keep the best action as day one you should store your baits in the soft plastic cases if there are ones specifically like like let's say a citizen where it comes with a uh, a molded case that way everything is staying nice and neat no messed up tails Everything stays just like day one inside of the case there. But with that being said, it's time to break out one that's even bigger. This is the, the Battle Shad 7.5. So we're up in the ante even more. This one, I would say, is even more exclusive from Working Class Zero. We just love their baits. We've bought quite a few uh, over the last, I'd say, year, year and a half or so. I'm going to creep him through the grass, just like that last one. We're throwing a shad coloration. Same thing. It's built in specifically for these owner hooks. And there's even a soft air pocket. Hear that soft air pocket in there so that bait can compress and you get better hookup ratios this also has what's called a head case harness so inside of here there's this harness and then you've got this loop attached and you actually bend that loop out and then install your hook and then you cinch it back down together so that way you don't get those blowouts on the nose of this bait right here specifically it's got a whole harness built in so that bait can last longer and that is what y'all want right there so we're breaking out the battle shad snagless swim bait right here absolutely sick if you want to grab these i think they go closer to 60 bucks a piece nowadays if you can get a hold of them there is a place you can find them after market though get on swim bait universe facebook group and a lot of times people are trading these or maybe they're selling them the citizens and the battle shads that's probably the one place you'd be able to find them if you miss out on a drop so i know y'all been asking a lot about big swim bait videos you've seen us throw these in the past and you always love when we break them out that is how you can get a hold of one yourself and fish it if you want to give these things a dangle. Let's rig it up, man. Y'all can tell in my voice, too. I'm on the Sudafed. I'm on the Ibuprofen. I'm on the nasal decongestant spray. If it's designed for a sinus infection, that's what I took. A nice solid 5 plus would make me feel a whole lot better. <laughs> Woo, Palomar not.
And there we go, ladies and gents. Extendable clippers on Carl's bait and tackle. Cannot live without these right here. And we've done the same thing. We have bent that hook up just a little bit. This is a 10 aught owner beast hook as opposed to a dot we have on the citizens we kind of bounce back and forth between them i think i like the a dots on the citizens uh but here we go with the 10 aught on the gigantic soft plastic swim bait the battleship 7.5 Oh my gosh, we got one, we got one, we got one, we got one. Oh my gosh. Come on, what is this? Oh, the battle shad. What is it? Oh, nice. Ooh. Okay, there we go. I think that's the biggest of the day, baby. Oh, shoot. <laughs> Not the biggest of the day. Holy smokes. That was casting right over there against the reeds. Not even that far into the retrieve, we got that hit. But he was coming at us quick. I had to reel in so much slack before I went for that hook set. Holy smokes. Whew. Breaking out the uh, working class zeros today. Let's go. Sick. That one actually got my heart racing. I figured it was going to be a bigger fish. Not to say that is a small one by any means, but not. Oh, golly. I was about to let you go, and then you just got to go crazy on me. Holy smokes. Sharp teeth. Not the caliber. We were hoping for on the battle shad. Let's go for another because even though that one, that bite took a while to get. I've been fishing for a minute with this thing. Uh, we definitely want to get something bigger. Oh, oh gosh, we got hit again. He came back. Oh my freaking gosh. Yo, that fish hit it twice right here. Fish hit it twice. Had to have been a smaller fish because he didn't inhale it. That's what we're gonna tell ourselves. Let's showcase some more stuff now. Let's go ahead and uh, break out something different. I'm, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling good today. Let's go back to the bull shad for a second. We gotta try and catch one on the multi-jointed hard plastic swim bait real quick. And if we can put that together, we'll break out a bigger glide bait. We'll do that. That'll be a nice finisher and hopefully yield the biggest catch of the day. All right, so this one's a little bit different. If I get a fish, I'm not gonna set the hook. I'm gonna just lean into it. It's got those treble hooks. So it's a little bit different. You gotta play those fish out on the treble hooks oftentimes. Now. These are bigger and more beefy treble hooks than a lot of like smaller swim baits. So I shouldn't have as much of a risk or an issue, but I am going to be thinking about, okay, where's my drag at? How's my rod angle? Am I going to rip these things out of that fish's mouth, which is easier to do with the treble hooks oftentimes than that big single hook. Um, so there's things you got to think about with these treble hooks. So that's why we backed off the drag a little bit. If I do set the hook, it's going to be muscle memory and accidental just because I've been setting the hook on those soft plastic swim baits all day. And I could definitely see myself doing it on accident, but that's not, oh, fish on, fish on. I saw him go for it. I saw that wake as soon as it hit the surface. I was about to say, I figured that was about to happen. That sucks because he might've been the only one over here. All right, I'm going to try not to get this bait caught, but what I'm going to do is cast over there into that opening. I'm going to work it fast, almost like a wake bait. And then I'm going to pop it over this tree if I can. So, doink. Perfect. And we were not... Oh, yeah, I was about to say, how did we not get rewarded with a bite? That was such an epic cast. Yes. <laughs> Sick. Okay. Okay. That was like, that was, can we say textbook? <laughs> we had to work for that one wowzers all right so first one a hard plastic treble hook bait there for y'all today a bigger swim bait that is the mike buka bull shad the legendary carl's bait and tackle if you want to grab one y'all so sick and i have a feeling well not a feeling i'm almost positive if this was clearer water we would be getting more hits on this thing too because it just stays a little closer to the surface i was able to work those other baits lower the soft plastic ones but this one being on braid, again, which is not the ideal setup, I'd rather fish this on like 15 or 20 pound fluorocarbon. Anytime I'm fishing big baits, I like reassurance of heavier line. But then of course, if you got open water or your fish are line shy or a combination, then you can drop it down to some lighter line. I wouldn't throw this thing on like less than 10. I would probably do 12 because like you get into these baits here and you could just like break it off casting just because the line is just not heavy enough to even really cast these things depending on what knot you tie so or not even depending on what knot you tie there just could be a fault in the knot it happens and then there it goes you know 50 bucks 
60 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, whatever cost for that swim bait. So uh, we're still a ways away from sunset, but I would like to break out a big glide for you. How about that? What a day on the big swim baits. I didn't think I was going to catch this many fish. I like, if we're being honest, what do we want to throw? See, the problem with throwing the 86 is I really don't want to lose it. Devin really likes this color, so I might not throw the 86. I might. This one also costs a ton of money. I think this was our first big expensive glide bait we ever bought. This is a phony shad right here. Uh, whew, what a beautiful bait. I've caught some fish in ponds with this guy right here. Big single jointed glide bait. Uh, you can see some battle scars. Big old beefy treble hooks. We've got them in those uh, hook holder deals. Maybe we'll throw one that's like reasonably priced that y'all could just go out and grab anytime you want and try and throw. This is a, I believe this is a seven inch glide bait. This is a, a Molex, oh here it is. Molex glide bait. It's called the 178 SS, a slow sink. I think this is what caught my seven pound PB right here. So let's break it out. We haven't broken it out in a long time. It was on the kayak last time we caught a fish on it. I'm gonna throw it on the overkill setup just because I don't wanna untie anything else. Ideally, you're throwing this on a rod that's rated for like, uh, I'd say two to three ounce baits. That's probably where this one's sitting. And uh, same with those, same with the other baits we've been throwing as well. Gotta make sure you got some swim bait gear. I'll, I'll link the swim bait gear that I have down in the description. This is probably our favorite setup for like big heavy swim baits. So this, this rod is rated for one to four ounce baits. Can really accomplish a lot with it. Feels great. Uh, we got the Tranks on there. That's our favorite swim bait reel as well as many others. We got the 200 size, which is great for just like getting, it's like really the perfect size for getting out, hitting ponds, hitting lakes. Uh, it holds plenty of line. I need to re-spool it, but a 200 size gets you a lot of line. All the gearing inside of these Tranks are real beefed up compared to some of the other casting uh, reels they have. It's almost geared for swim bait. So this is like the swim bait reel. The Tranks, I mean, it's it's got to be our favorite. I'll toss that combo down in the description in case y'all are looking for one. I shouldn't even tell you about this gear because like I said, it's just way overkill. I just literally bought a big heavy rod that I could throw some heavy baits today. I didn't know what I was going to be throwing on this and it turns out I'm going to be throwing a glide which is like not the heaviest thing. Well, like this one specifically. So anyways, this rod is rated for like four to eight ounce swim baits, I think. I mean, it's like literally a broomstick. And then the reel is a, the reel is a Tranks 400. I mean, it's a big, it's a big Tranks. We got this for like a... We do some saltwater fishing or if we go for musky in the future or just, you know, it's kind of like a, a big reel that we can use for multi-purpose. So it's got those Gomexus handles on there. Pretty sick. We got it in the pink color, just a larger handle. Aftermarket, Gomexus are pretty cheap and affordable compared to the Varials. That is why we love them. Haven't thrown the trout in quite some time. As we're about to go for our first cast with this, one thing to bring up is like, don't be intimidated to try and throw some larger swim baits. And, and there's much bigger baits than these as well. But like, this is considered like insane to a lot of anglers. Something like a six, seven, eight uh, inch soft plastic or hard plastic swim bait, they're just not throwing them. And so hopefully with this video, you gain a little bit more confidence that throwing all these different patterns, all these different colors, that's kind of why I've broken out so much different stuff today. They will all work. Look, bass are predatory species and they're looking to feed. Now there's no trout in this place that I'm fishing, right? There's no trout in here, but I'm still gonna throw this trout bait and I know the fish are gonna key in and love it. For one, it looks like other bait fish that could be swimming in here. You know, a crappie's got a couple little dots and they're nice and shiny. A bluegill, if this thing flutters the right way or if they see it from above instead of below, they might say, oh, that looks like a nice bluegill. So it is still an imitation of what these fish could be eating, yet it is a trout, which I know they are not. So same thing with that battle shad, that was all white. Do you think there's any completely all white fish in here? Well, maybe if there's some smaller shad, they have that appearance, but they're not like, they're not just an all white fish, right? So shad colors, I always throw with confidence. And then as far as the citizen goes, I mean, that was almost like just a, that was a solid color. It was almost like a silver. Um, I forgot this reel's broken after we dropped it on the floor. So it makes a terrible sound when you cast, but uh, oh, it even feels bad when you reel it in. Yeah, this thing is so effed after we dropped it. Anyways, <laughs> just get out there and throw some big baits. I will not lie. It's not common to get this many bites, but I think what's happening is it's starting to transition into that fault. Like we've had some cooler nights and I think these bass are now starting to feed up on the bait fish so much more. They're creeping up shallow where we've been catching them deep a lot lately. And so it's like, okay, maybe these fish truly are 
changing things up in that early fall transition and now we're able to get them on these bigger baits because the fall is a perfect time for big swim baits so good thing you're watching this video now ahead of schedule you can go out there grab a few of these baits and absolutely slay this fall it's going to be a fun time see if we get a hit if we do it's going to be ferocious because this thing just barely moves nice and slow glides left glides right and then boom i mean it's a heavy hit when you get one of these glide baits it's so sick oh my we just had a bite i swear to you i swear wow we just had a bite okay so retrieval on this guys i'm pretty much just slow and steady retrieve and it's just got a nice wide swing and glide swim and occasionally i'll hit it with a quick like half reel twist like a doop and it whips really fast and it'll pause and usually if a fish is following it that's when it will decide to bite it you will see a lot of guys who will like twitch their glide baits a lot and i would do that a little bit more if this water was clearer if this water was clearer, I could see it a little bit better. Also, even through your reel, you can kind of feel what it's doing. You can watch your line a little bit, but a lot of times you're casting really far with these baits. So if you can feel that like tension, like, okay, it's a little harder to pull because it's at the apex of one of its turns, then you know when to whip it. Like you're bringing it right back around. But this reel is so clanky right now that I can't feel it too much. We just got our first bite. I want to catch one on this thing so bad. Whale. Well. Turns out the trout game is a little bit harder than anticipated. To be honest, I didn't throw up for the most amount of time, but I do want to get home, start doing some editing, and want to thank you all for sticking around to the end of this one. Also, thank you to Carl's Bait and Tackle for sponsoring today's episode. And we look forward to fishing the swim baits a lot more this fall. The bite is guaranteed to pick up on them, and we will be breaking them out. So hit that subscribe button. Do not forget to go check out Torrance's page, uh, all his social media, link down in the description. I'm going to go ahead and load this kayak up, and we're going to call it a day. One of the best days I've had throwing swim baits in a long time. Thank you to these cooler nights. The fish are feeling it man go out there grab some big swim baits for yourself you don't got to go crazy with the high dollar stuff like we were throwing today uh, we've accumulated this stuff slowly over the years and so with that being said get out there grab you uh something like a you know what let me just break it out this was probably the bait that we did the best with the earliest on in our big swim bait career and that is the jackal ganterell jr Bam, look at that delicious looking bluegill bait right here. I believe that's the spawn gill. And then my favorite color, uh, this might be called like the RT gill or something like that. This is the full size. I, I just prefer to throw the juniors because they get a lot of bites. They imitate bluegill perfectly and they will catch giants. But here's my favorite color is the ghost gill. So it's almost like clearish. It is very sick and i think these things go for under 30 bucks probably like 20 something bucks you can get them on carl's for the cheapest because if you have a carl's club membership uh, they're discounted if you haven't ever purchased anything from carl's in the past and it's your first order you can actually save ten dollars on your first order of 25 or more you got to use code weston10 at checkout so grab you some swim baits get things started and uh yeah the time is now we'll catch you guys on the next episode peace Got it's a big one. It's a big one. Got it. Got it. Ooh, it's a bite. Fish. That one. We got one. We got one. We got one. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah, I was about to say. How did we not get rewarded with a bite? That was such an epic catch.